This is EOA News online at eoanews.com and right here on YouTube at Hermela TV. Today, we are talking about Somalia and the rise of al-Shabaab extremists in the country. The group has been around since about 2006, but in the last few years, al-Shabaab had been somewhat contained, operating mostly in rural areas of southern Somalia. But in the last several months, there have been multiple attacks in the capital of Mogadishu targeting civilians. So who is al-Shabaab? I speak with Somali analyst Abdi Wahab Sheikh Abdisamad, who's also chairman of Institute for Horn of Africa Strategic Studies. Here is our conversation. Joining me now is Abdi Wahab Sheikh Abdi Samad to discuss the issue of al-Shabaab. Al Abdi Wahab, thank you so much for joining us. For those who don't know what al-Shabaab is and how it began, how would you explain it? Thank you so much for having me. And Somalia has suffered a multiple calamities for the last 32 years. That's what you call a state collapse, prolonged civil war, leadership crisis, drought is an al-Shabaab. Let me, you know, discuss the issue of Shabab, how they came, and what, you know, the historical background of Al-Shabab. Al-Shabab was established TBLF regime in, 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 in Ethiopia. And it was the first budget, the first money they received. You know, the founder of Al-Shabab, Ahmed Abdi Gudane, and also his deputy, Abdul Rashid Al-Afghani, they received a $1 million from Ethiopian intelligence in 2006, the border town called Togo Jale between you know, Somaliland and Ethiopia. Then they came to Mogadishu and started recruiting members of Al-Shabaab. Initially, they were, Al Shabaab was part and parcel of international, you know, Islamic Court Union. Unfortunately, when the Islamic Court Union joined the government or they formed the government, then Al Shabaab, they it became an independent entity from, you know, Islamic Court Union. Then what they have done, according to, you know, the multiple sources, according to, the, you know, research we have done thoroughly, from 2006 up to 2022, they carry out an explosion specifically for the civilian areas that is almost more than 1,800 explosions from 2006 to 2022, as we speak right now. And they, in fact, they cause a, a casualties or death, more than 17,000 people of Somalis. That specifically, the, you know, they're targeting the, maybe the hotels, hotels the, the market, and also the, the busy street. Uh, no, I'm not including, in fact, you know, the, the, the target, you know, they, they also target the military facilities, also military facilities. That is not included, in fact. This is what they call it specifically for civilians. Al-Shabaab, they work, they just, they, they behave the kind of what you call the government. If you look at Al-Shabaab today, they are controlling the market. They are collecting a tax from the business people more than government. They have a large-scale marijuana in southern part of Somalia, specifically Kortuare, Dujuma, Sablale, Mugabe, up to the, what they call Marevi. They, in fact, they have a large-scale marijuana. Then they, they got, you know, they have they receive a lot of you know money from there to finance their their struggle against the government. They are shareholders of the big telecommunications of the country. Now they start even is venturing or you know entering what you call uh, you know development properties in in Somalia as well. So Al Shabaab it's the richest you know organization today in Somalia. So the question that many Somalis are asking today is that this organized poorly you know resource Somali security forces have shown a little progress to dislodge al-Shabaab for several reasons. Reason number one, the communities in southern and central Somalia are being balkanized along the Kalanis. The Kalanis, Kalanis in fact, are borderized. They don't, trust, they don't trust one another. That's one issue. They capitalize on that so that they are going to, you know, capitalize the division within the Kalanis in Somalia. 
that also has helped Al Shabaab to be a resilient, you know, organization within Somalia. Al Shabaab is the most organized Islamic militant in Africa today. That's why it will take years to come to defeat Al Shabaab as we speak right now. So, so you said there are some divisions within uh, the clans that that, that Al Shabaab is taking advantage of. What are those divisions based on? Is it resources, historical grievances? Combination of so many things. First and foremost, you know, uh, there's a minorities and majority clan within the South Central Somalia. The minority clan is they join Al Shabaab for the protection so that they can you know they can protect from the what they call the major clans that's one issue secondly the jobless youth it became al shabab you know kind of livelihood whereby they can you know they can join them at least you know to feed the families the other issue is let us just categorize al within al shabab al shabab there are four categories the category number one those who are foreign fighters who came from the maybe the, the Arab world or some other places, those are affiliated with Al-Qaeda. Those are what they call the leaders. In fact, they publicly you know, announced that they are part and parcel of Al-Qaeda. So those you know, foreign fighters, they are in fact siding with Al-Qaeda. The second category is a number of Al-Shabaab, members of Al-Shabaab, which they want to establish the kind of you know Islamic Sharia within Somali borders. They don't think beyond the Somali borders. So those guys, they are part of it. The other category, the third category, is the you know, unemployed youth who join them at least to get an employment from them. Since they are controlling the the big you know companies, they are controlling what they call the banks. They are controlling, you know, you know, you know, telecommunications. They are controlling, you know, property development. They are controlling a large-scale farmers, marijuana farmers, farmers. So these youth, unable youth, they, 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 they join Al Shabab for economic purposes. The, the last group, the group of nationalistic, they are against what they call uh, Amazon presence in Somalia. You know, Amazon is keeping force or admins as mm -hmm. we speak right now, they don't want a foreign, they don't have what you call a foreign, you know, entities and foreign forces to be in Somalia. So it's kind of, you know, you know, a struggle against those foreign forces. So they join, that for, that for, that's for four categories. But unfortunately, unfortunately, you know, just a five to six years ago, you know, the number of Al-Shabaab, prominent, you know, you know, scholars, some of the brilliant scholars with Ashabab, they left, they just, you know, you know, they left the, 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 the organization, like Mukhtar Robo, the current religious minister, like Sheikh Dai Rawais, around is in house arrest, like Atam, now he went to Qatar, Qatar somewhere there. So those are, those are those, you know, top, you know, rumors or top, you know, clergy or top what they call is Islamic scholars within Ashabab, they left. So all in all, Ashabab, just a few few weeks ago, some clans in central Somalia they declare the war against Al Shabab for for two reasons. First, the first reason is Al Shabab they are collecting a lot of taxes. Even right now they start collecting a poll tax. Each and each an individual person who has a business, who has a, you know, if you are going to sell the house, anything they are going to collect, you know, what you call a taxes. That a burden. For, for, for the community. Then they start uprising against them. Unfortunately, the question is, if the Quranists are polarized, then how are they going to defeat Al-Shabaab? The second issue is, the government, in fact, are they having a resource to fund the fight against Al-Shabaab? Government, are they have enough logistical so that they can easily defeat Al-Shabaab? So the, the question is, if the government, you know, provided that in ammunition and small armies to the, to the to the clans, then what will be the repercussions after they defeat Al Shabaab? This is what they call a pro-government militia. If historically pro-government militias, they don't have a good record. If the government, you know, farm or provided ammunition, a light 
peoples, to the Qur'anis who are fighting against Al-Shabaab, after they defeat Al-Shabaab, what will be the, what will be the repercussions? The country will go back to early 1980s, to early 1990s. That's one issue. Secondly, you know, there is no trust among the, the clans, as we speak right now. Gov is, is, is the responsibility of the government of the day, at least to initiate a reconciliation between the clans, build the trust, gain the hearts and minds of the clans. Let the government provide the security for clans. Let them provide the employment for the youth. In that sense, at least they can easily defeat Al-Shabaab. But government has no, uh, you know, what they call a clear agenda, clear vision, how to defeat Al-Shabaab. So um, in my prediction, in my opinion, it will take time to defeat Al-Shabaab. If they defeat, for instance, or if they arm the, what do you call it, if they arm the, the clans in the south central Somalia, then what will be the repercussion in future? How are they going to disarm those, you know, you know, clans? What do you think about uh, the way that the current um, administration of President Hassan Sheikh Mohammed is handling this and what could be done differently from your perspective? In fact, Hassan Sheikh Mohammed is between hard place and rock. This is a golden opportunity in a sense. If the clans in central Somalia, you know, now are fighting against the Al Shabaab using their own resources, using their own, you know, ammunition, using their own, you know, light weapons. If the government grab that opportunity and regulate the government and, and put what they call, a, you know, a nice record, then Hassan he will leave a legacy. But unfortunately, you know, the role of the Somali army forces are missing right now because in the, people are talking about the you know clans. They they have done a pricing against Al Shabaab. You know the former administration, uh, you know former administration, uh, former administration. At least he created a small number or uh, trained a Somali security apparatus with the help of the Turkish government. If the government use the Turkish trained soldiers against the Al Shabaab with the help and organize, you know, those clan militias, then they can easily overcome the problem of the future. But what I have seen right now, they are undermining the authority of the of the Somali National Forces. If the army forces became a tribal entity, then they cannot defeat these people. Al Shabaab they aware of that. Our Shabab, they are aware of the weakness of the government. Our Shabab, they are they they now capitalizing the small minority minority clans. They were saying government cannot give you a guarantee for your security. So why are you now fighting against us? We give the security against the major tribes. So how are they going to give the guarantee? Militarization of the Somali community will be a problem in future. For instance, if today everybody is armed. In the south central Somalia, if the government armed the tribes, they say, what, what's the significance of the police and the military now? Everybody has a gun. Are they going to, to take orders from, the, from, from, from soldiers? No, they will not take orders from the from military. They will not take orders from, from, the, from the police. Exactly, the country is going back to 1980s and 1990s. And that is, will, will, it has a long-term repercussion the stability and security and safety of Somali, of Somali, of Somali state. And, and, you know, tribalism is just such a common issue across the continent, but, you know, I know it best in, in the Horn of Africa. And I, I'm curious to know, is tribalism the foundation in which Al-Shabaab was created, or was it a completely different dynamic when they were first formed in 2006? And what is the changing or what is the the evolution of the attitudes towards tribalism generally speaking in somalia at this point in fact tribalism ex existed before 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 al-shabaab in fact al-shabaab has minimized the tribalism to be honest because if you look at the members of the of al-shabaab it's, it's across the board across the board every clan it's you know, members of al-shabaab you know consist almost every clan in somalia 
And that's exactly, you know, Islam, when, it came, when it came to tribalism, they are much better than the government. Government now, they are at least in encouraging tribalism, rather than, you know, when, when discouraging them. But as Shabab, they are discouraging tribalism. As, as, as Shabab is purely for ideology, purely for what you call, what you call the ideology, Islamic ideology. They don't entertain the, the tribalism. That's exactly the leaders of Shabab. They came from the Somaliland. Most of them, they are from Somaliland. How the Somaliland can survive in the South Central Somalia? They don't. They don't have uh, you know a clan there. That's like that's a clear indication they don't entertain the tribalism. But the government are the one who encourages tribalism. Although it exists tribalism before the before the Al Shabab. The final point is, let government have a clear strategy. How are they going to win, to win the hearts and the minds of the people? How let them bring on the table a good strategy, which they are going to defeat Al Shabaab. But what they have seen right now, government are, are not organized. This is the kind of it's not the kind of strategy the government they are going to defeat Al Shabaab as 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 I have seen right now. In fact, the government in, in what what they are doing right now. They are going to repeat the, the same mistakes of 1980 and 1990s, and that that will undermine the stability, the safety, and security of the Somali Republic. Wow. Let us hope we, you know, that we don't see the region backslide in that way. There's been just so much progress it seems made uh, in Somalia, and the last few months has been a little bit disheartening, but. Um, looking forward, we'll see how this develops. Abduhab, thank you so much for your time and your insight. Much appreciated. Thank you so much. Thank you, Armila.